Father's Day, like Mother's Day last month, is fraught with feelings. These holidays are times that seem to put a spotlight on relationships between parents and their children. But the idea of both are based around a multitude of assumptions about how families are created and how those relationships are supposed to feel. My own relationship to my father has been outside the bounds of typical cards you might find at the store for a very long time. My parents divorced when I was two years old. They lived in the same small town throughout my childhood, so I saw my dad on a regular basis. I remember being in elementary school, and around the end of the school year, it would be time to make gifts for Father's Day. One year, we made these little wire figurines and could pick out any sort of thing to have the figures doing to represent our dads. So I thought to myself, what does my dad do? I knew he was a security guard, but didn't know how to represent that with the wires provided. I knew he told a lot of jokes. I knew he played cribbage and cards with all sorts of his friends. Again, I wasn't sure what to do with those images in my head and the assignment to make a little wire representation of my father. So I made a figure of a person fishing. There was a little pole and string and a little fish on the end. It looked really good, at least in my memories and through my elementary aged eyes. You could tell it was a person and that they were fishing. Assignment complete. I had represented my father in copper wire. The teacher liked what I had created. It looked like a Father's Day gift, I guess, and fit an image of fatherhood that didn't raise any eyebrows. Only it wasn't really my father. I'm sure my dad and I went fishing at some point in my childhood. We went camping and did those sorts of things, but he wasn't a fisherman. And that wasn't a regular part of what we did together, but it fit the narrative about what Father's Day was. Ties and coffee mugs, sports and fishing, manly stuff. My father is a really nice guy, the center of laughter and always talking in a group. He knows everyone or will as soon as he is in a room full of new people. In that, we are very similar. But my model about what a parent is doesn't stem from him. He didn't come to the school plays and wasn't there when I was sick. I and my half-siblings from his first marriage were raised by our mothers. I spent a lot of my late adolescence really angry about this. I stopped celebrating Father's Day altogether. And then I realized something. I didn't need my family to fit the mold that was being held up for me. Yes, I had a dad, and he was around less than some other kids' dads. But I had a lot of parenting happening in my home. My mom and grandma were there for all those times I talked about before and more. At some point, I began to recognize my mom on both Mother's and Father's Day. She had parented me more than enough to get two weird handmade presents or at least a card, twice a year. As my husband Justin and I consider parenthood in the coming years, I have begun to wonder more about these ideas of what a father or a mother mean to me in reality. Even with two of us, will our children have a father? What about a mother? What do these loaded terms mean in my life moving forward? The more I reflect on having a child, the scarier it is to me. Part of my heart already belongs to Justin, with all of the risks and wonders that comes with that. To impart more pieces to a child seems to be the most incredible gamble of all. More than that, to have responsibility for raising someone into an adult human being that will make decisions about so many things in their lives based on what I have said, or more likely, what I have done in spite of what I have said. The idea seems ridiculous to me. And yet, I want to place that bet 
and see the person we could create together. But what about that whole fatherhood and motherhood thing? Currently, we are envisioning the two of us being all the parents involved. I'm not sure I know how to be a mother, nor do I have much idea about how to be a father either. My dad did what parenting he did. My mom did the parenting she did. Mostly, I visited my dad now and then on weekends, and my mom was the person to be counted on. Someone who I trusted and who I believed had my best interests at heart, at least most of the time. And that is where the beauty lies, in what we label as a family. As parents, as mothers, as fathers, it goes beyond the labels or the archetypes to how we are together, to what we do rather than what we are called. Do the narrow boxes lifted up on holidays like this one cause pain? Yes, they do. And I think we can change how we define those relationships. How many parents does it take to raise a child? I believe as many as can be gathered. It seems to me that fatherhood is a relationship, a verb as much as it is a noun. Being a father is also an identity that is in part bestowed by the children in our lives. When they look for the person in the room they call dad or mom or mappa or any other name created to hold that relationship. When they come running after a bad dream. When they sing in the school play and look out into the audience. Their actions and their naming you dad is what seals the deal. So will my child have a mother, a father, two of one, or one of each, or more than two? I'm not really sure, and I find beauty there too. But I do know my child will have someone they can look for in times of fear as well as joy. I will do all I can to help them find their way through life, and they will know unconditional love of the adults in their life. Part of the answer to my question depends on how my child sees their parents. Will we be dads, moms, rents, some other name I cannot even imagine? That is an answer I cannot wait to find out.